Well guys, I was doing some checkups on some tarantulas that were in pre-molt stage. Some that have been in pre-molt stage for quite a long time. This is one of them. This is the Davis Penelorus. This was the one that I was probably about 95% positive she was female based on the last molt. Uh, and I will show you the uh, molt um, in a minute. But yeah, she came through fine. Looks like she must have molted overnight because her legs are not translucent anymore. Um, all her color is there. She's looking good. Um, going to get some water. She's got water in the dish, but I'm going to wet down an area here for her. Uh, she does seem to like an area that has a little bit of moisture to it. And this close after a molt, or recently after a molt, I shouldn't say close. Um, generally having some extra moisture there for them to um, suck on, or not suck on, but drink off their webbing. Uh, other than just that water dish can help. You could see her molt mat that she's sitting on right now. So um, I know that I just mentioned her this morning, as a matter of fact, when I was talking about uh, spiders molting and a few that need to really, really do that. Her being one of them, um, her suspected male mate, the other. Um, my Brachypelma vagans is in desperate need of a molt and one of the uh, I was looking at one of the Samopeus reduncus uh, another suspected female that definitely needs a molt real quick uh, to add with the Canthoscuria gina coladas and the male Afonopelma hensi um, those ones all need to really really molt here somewhere in the near future so I'm going to show you her molt and then try and explain um, because her spermathicae looks completely different than what everybody is used to. Uh, everybody's used to, you know, the, the thing that looked like maybe a pair of lips or, uh, you know, the, the frog looking thing with the two um, bulbs and uh, the, 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 the shape of a face of a frog. Um, I know you've seen, you know, pictures of spermathicae before, but this one's a tad bit different. Um, it's very interesting to look at. So I'm going to try and uh, get that over here so you guys can see that. I've just got to make sure that the, that the light will be set up the right way so you actually can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so what we're going to do is this is the best that I can do here with just the regular viewing of uh, just a regular camera part. So what we'll I'll do, you could see this. Hold on, let me get the uh, little... See how well I can do with... Uh, that's going to be shaking because I always shake. See this part right here. This is the uterus externus, this little round, half round part here. And this darkened part here is the um, spermathicae. Now, when spiders are smaller, females, they'll have this feature. Uh, not feature, this organ, their spermathicae, if you, if, if, if you wish to call it an organ, I guess. Um, Maybe that's not the right terminology, but the sperm receptacle of, of the uh, tarantula, the, the female tarantula, it won't look like that. The, the shape will be there, but the coloration isn't there. So as the female ages and gets older, molt by molt by molt, her spermathicae will sclerotize. That means that darkening and thickening of that membrane which means that once you see this in a molt, then you know that the female is mature enough to, to mate. Okay, so the last time that I saw the, the picture, um, it wasn't as prevalent as this, and it was nowhere near this dark. It was very, very faint. So I know that this female is ready to mate. She can be mated after she recovers. Um, generally, you wait about 45 days after their, their molt and have a couple meals in them prior to, excuse me, trying to uh, get them to mate. Um, but of course, we have to wait for the male. So what I'm going to do, and how I'm going to do this, I'm not quite sure yet. I have to rearrange a few things on a shelf. Um, so what I want to do is take her enclosure and put his enclosure on top of her enclosure. Um, and hopefully the, her pheromones... Uh, he'll pick up, which will push him in the mold. He's been in pre-mold just as long as she has. So I, I wouldn't expect it being too much longer for him. 
before he molts, but uh, definitely somewhere in the near future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, maybe, yeah, here they are. I'm going to pause you guys again here, and I'm going to put the macro attachment on the camera so we can get a closer view of this. Um, I probably won't talk because what I want to do is plug my light into the camera because it seems to work better uh, when the light's the same level as the camera. As you can see, this light is way up here, so we're not getting the full effect. So I'm not going to talk during that part, and I'll just briefly show you, um, you know, as close up as I can possibly get with the video so that you guys can actually see exactly what I'm talking about. And then just real quick, too, we had one other spider I found that molted. Um, most likely, odds are probably sometime the end of last week. And there's, <laughs> I might as well get, get you guys over here real quick. You can see the little dude sticking out there. And you can see the molt. So we threw the molt out. This is the Chelobrachys fimbriatus. Now, since it threw the molt out, that to me is a sign that it is ready to eat. Um, because it has taken the time to harden up. It did whatever it needed to do with the molt that it wanted to do, um, whether that was, you know, disperse or get um, fluid out of it. Uh, and it's now taking the time to get rid of the molt. So we'll probably go ahead and try and feed this little one and see if it's ready to eat. So I will put the macro attachment on, show you guys the spermatheca here, and then we'll try and feed this fimbriatus and hopefully we'll get it to come out so we can see what it looks like now because I'm sure that patterning on the abdomen is pretty prevalent now. Okay, um, I wonder if you probably can hear my daughter's music in the background here. I don't know. Um, yeah, we. I went ahead and put a cricket in here for this little one. This is the Chelobrachys fimbriatus. Um, it's been in and out a couple times. It, it gets to the edge and then it wants to go back in for some odd reason. I don't know if it's just spooked or what's going on. But um, generally what I notice with fossorial species like this, um, ornithoctonae, um, well, there's a, there's a ton of them. Pteranochelis, just a bunch of them that when they dispel their molt, that usually tells me that they're recovered and ready to eat, especially if they dispel their molt and then they sit at the entrance of their burrow. Um, that's generally a pretty good indication for a fossorial species that they're interested in looking for food. Um, so if you have a spider that's out uh, we'll just use this one for instance, Chelobrachys fimbriatus. If, if it's sitting at the edge of its burrow at nighttime and you, you witness this and then um, that's usually a sign from them saying, okay, you know what, I'm sitting here waiting for something to come around. If something comes around, I'm going to eat it. If not, once the morning comes, I'm going back down inside. And that's generally what they do. Um, so when I, when I was going through everybody and I saw that this molt sitting here, um, the first thing I saw was the spider. He was, it was about out this far. So just the carapace was just starting to stick out. I really wanted to see the abdominal um, patterning and see if the coloring is there. See actually how big the spider's gotten too. That um, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see where we're at with this little guy. They don't, they, they don't grow like lightning, but they don't take their time molting and growing either. So I want to make sure that, although I believe that this habitat here will be good for it for at least another molt or two, uh, I'd like to at least see how big it is. And I was hoping that this cricket would entice it to come out, but it apparently isn't. So um, if it happens to come out and feed, I'll try and get some pictures of it, put it on my Eerie Arachnids page on Facebook or on my Instagram. Um, I haven't I haven't linked anything in the descriptions. Strictly because I, I think I do, because most of the time I do everything on my phone. So when I go to upload that, that is already, uh, YouTube is already open up on my phone. So... I can't go and 
onto YouTube and then, you know, like get another person's link and then put it on the phone. So what I need to do is, is build a file on my phone for the links, like for my web page, for um, my Instagram, for my Facebook page, for me just on Facebook, period. Uh, maybe some of the groups that I'm in and then other people's videos. That way I can just open up that file and then copy that and put it into there. So I have a little bit of technological work I need to figure out. And again, I'm still learning a lot of this stuff um, because I never really had to learn it before. So a lot of this stuff is new for me. So I'm, I'm getting there slowly but surely. Hopefully by the end of this year, I'll be a bit more tech savvy and uh, understand some of this stuff a tad bit more. So okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the video with the at least the female Davis Penaloris. We definitely 100% know that she's a female. 100% definitely know that she's breedable. So now we just got to get the male to uh, kick it into gear a little bit and uh, get him the molt. And he's, his abdomen is huge. There's not a doubt in my mind that he's going to mature in this molt. Um, not one doubt in my mind whatsoever. So she's probably right around, I'm going to say three and a half to three and three quarters inch long. So she's, she's pretty much to the point where she's going to be pretty full grown. They only get about four inches, so... Um, she may have one more molt in her that will gain her size from there on out. Once they reach their max size, when they molt, they generally just molt their skin to, to, to give themselves a new exoskeleton. They don't actually get any bigger. So, okay, well, thanks for watching yet another video today. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll give you a quick uh, quick shot here of... I could see the Emperor Scorpion walking around. He's been very inactive for the last week, week and a half. I thought maybe it was molting, but yet, no, it hasn't yet. So, and there is the infamous Cheeto. So, again, thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll talk to everybody real soon.